It all started last year. I found a game called Family Party 30 Great Games Outdoor Fun for the Nintendo Wii at a thrift store, and I bought it for the low, low price of $5. I uploaded a review of it to YouTube, and while that video was pretty silly, I thought to myself, how can I make a video even sillier? Then, I got some comments talking about a sequel to the game on the Wii U. So I bought it for $15, so it's not as good of a deal, but I'm sure the games are gonna be way better to justify the cost. But first things first, let's take a look at the box art. So, uh, as you can see, uh, we got 30 of the greatest games ever created. Oh, looking at the back, you can see that these games are claimed to be awesome. So I better not be disappointed. And also the studio that made this is super creative. They are just called art. And it looks like they couldn't even afford to make their logo a PNG. Whatever, let's just get into the game. But before we can do that, we of course have to talk about the menus. Please stop talking. The mascot of the game is this lion guy. And my god, this man never stops talking. The best part is when you hover over the options and he does this. There are two main game modes, challenge mode and free play mode. Free play mode lets you play a specific mini game or a specific series of mini games, but I'll be focusing on challenge mode since it's the one that you use to unlock them. Okay, so it wants me to make a name. Last time I did something very funny. So how can I come up with one even funnier? Oh yeah. Okay, we've gone through the unrelated stuff, but now we can finally figure it out. What does the standard round of Family Party 30 Great Games Obstacle Arcade generally play like? Um, Not very good. The minigames you'll be playing for these levels all revolve around two types of minigames. Wii Remote and Nunchuck games, and Wii U Gamepad games. And even though you play the two types of games equally, only half the minigames are actually tied to the theme the world you play follows. Throughout your playthrough, you'll get to have the wonderful inclusion of the lion guy, who acts just like your father if he actually came back with the milk. And he cheers you on as you play. But he also does this with every other character, and he never shuts up. We'll play a game using the Wii U gamepad. Oh, hell yeah! After playing a Wii Remote minigame, oh wait, I need to connect my nunchuck for this one, the winning player gets to be the gamepad user in a 1v3 minigame. Now here's the funny part. The minigame you get is chosen by a roulette wheel that goes from 1 to 10, with each number corresponding to a different minigame. This would be kinda neat if it weren't for the fact that the cutscene is unskippable and the gamepad minigames are horrendously unfair. Some of them are vastly in favor of the gamepad user, and some of the minigames just punish the gamepad user. But the funniest part of these minigames is that they aren't even 1v3. They're actually free for all, but with a distinct advantage or disadvantage to whoever's playing on the gamepad. Just as some examples, the soccer minigame gives a massive advantage to the gamepad player, but the three people defending the goalpost are still playing against each other to be the ones to defend the ball. And a similar thing happens in this bridge minigame, where the person in the very back is always doomed to have the least amount of points. But by far, the worst things these minigames have are the absolutely terrible controls that some of them possess. Why do you have to use motion controls for this? Just like the last game, the controls aren't made obvious. If you try to find out what to do, the game only tells you the incredibly obvious objectives like finish the race first or collect the most glowing orbs. And that's because the game actually hides the controls behind a whole other menu. You don't get to actually figure out the control scheme unless you go and select the tutorial option. And at that point, you're now dedicating minutes of your life to learning the controls of a mini game in Family Party 30 great games obstacle arcade for the Nintendo Wii U. So you've already lost in the long run. And even then, you might just end up losing anyways, since the bots can range from completely brain dead to cheating scumbags that deserve to wait in the bread line at dinner time. Yeah, you heard me, Jacques. So that's how your average game would play out. Now I'm gonna go through some of the best and worst mini games this game has to offer. So first things first, we have five different worlds to choose from. Those being Space Zone, Fantasy Area, 
Western Valley, Magical Coast, and Lost Lands. Why am I not surprised with the lack of originality? So what do we have to do in the very first world? Space Zone. This one has such classics like Chansey Crane, a game where you pick up dice and hope for the best. This is the entirety of the gameplay. As you can see, we once again return to the classic single-player split-screen gameplay. I'm pretty sure they never expected someone to play this game alone. Next, we got Spark Ball. So the goal here is to use the Wii Pointer to maneuver this ball. And you want to collect treasure while avoiding the walls because you'll <gasps> lose health. Here's Block Race. In this one, you need to cross the blocks like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> this one's actually really easy. I just didn't realize you had to shake the nunchuck to step on the left block, so I kind of just uh, kept jumping forward. Next, we have air hockey. It's kind of like air hockey, except you have literally no idea what's going on. And then we end things off with magical panels. This game's all right. You basically have to get all the squares to light up and then you get big points when you beat levels. Something that you really get to appreciate as the game goes on is the fact that the developers just randomly insert character names and compliments. So you have moments where the lion guy just calls everybody a genius in order. Oh man, Maria must be real stupid. Now you might think that this isn't too bad for one world, but then you have to realize that I skipped half the minigame because there are the gamepad ones. Each and every one of the gamepad minigames all play the same. The people on the TV do their own thing, and the gamepad player is doing something different, but generally still related to the minigame. And just like the Wii Remote games, the gamepad minigames also use the most absurd control schemes at times. It's almost like the devs didn't know that there were buttons on the Wii U gamepad, since most games either use gyro or the touchscreen. Okay, so now we have the next world, Fantasy Area. Obviously, there's gonna be some fantasy-based minigames, right? So first off, we have flying teacups to collect orbs. And yes, the controls do suck! Thanks for asking. Next, we have this ghost shooting minigame that would be right at home on the Super Nintendo. It's a typical whack-a-mole type game. Now we finally have one that actually isn't bad if it was released on the regular Wii. Here you have to pop the balloon with the number the game tells you to destroy. The bots are genuinely awful at this one, but I bet it would be pretty fun with actual people. Then we have a boat race. Wait, now here's where you fucked up, game. The boat race was already a mini game in the last Family Party game. Are you really that unoriginal? Oh yeah. Then we end things off with this stupid cloud jumping game. Here we got Western Valley, and this one has some pretty silly games. We start off with this bull riding game where you hit different combinations of buttons. Also, if the RNG is in your favor, you can just shake the Wii Remote and get thousands of free points. But only sometimes. This next one just sucks. You have to follow the classic 30 great games motto of Waggle. And even then, the controls are also terrible. Then we have this memory mini game. You have to hit the targets the game tells you to hit. While this one's definitely in the upper echelon of 30 gray games, I still think there's a really easy way to improve it. Instead of just flipping around the targets you're supposed to hit, what if they also rotated the board a few times? That way it's a bit harder to just remember where they were a few seconds ago. Catch up. Yep. Ending things off, we have the horse riding one. Now the cool thing about this one is that it's a better version of the earlier minigame. So why does this one exist? Magical Coast is where the devs finally ran out of ideas. As if they had any in the first place. This world genuinely has some of the worst minigames I've ever played. And of course, the bots have no problems playing these clunky and broken games, cause they'll never have to deal with the struggle that is holding the controller for themselves. So first we have this. So you shake the Wiimote to jump, and you fall. Did I mention there are four levels of this? So next we got this one. This is the second worst minigame I've ever played. You need to push these buildings to the required spot. Sounds plain and simple, right? Well, guess how you might control a game like this? Preferably a D-pad? An analog stick? Yeah, that's right. You have to use the Wii Remote's motion controls to play this one. How? I don't know. So then we have this one where you need to follow the light, and it's actually pretty good. But to do that, it forces you to stop and wait for the slowest attacking animation I've ever seen. 
It's fine, but I prefer the Rivals of Aether version. Then we have a Magic Carpet Racing minigame that was stolen from Mario Party. Then we finish things up by claiming fireworks. This one's actually pretty fun. You have to collect them as they come up from the bottom of the screen. You'll never guess where this one was also taken from. And that's all the different worlds. Oh wait, you're wondering about the last one? Well, I actually never got that far because it just didn't want to unlock no matter how many games I played. So it actually doesn't exist. The reception of Family Party 30 Great Games Obstacle Arcade is actually pretty terrible to say the least. And I have to mostly agree with the reviews. The controls are frustrating, the worlds are uninspired, and the game takes way too long to enjoy playing it. Out of every single minigame in the whole game, I think I only enjoyed about three of them. And I wouldn't even call them great games. This game is poopy fuck. Bye bye.